Let's look at uh, 1 John 2, verse 22. We'll start tonight and see where we wind up. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. No, that's two, is it not? Whosoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son or has the Son has the Father also. Amen. Amen. We, we teach and preach quite a bit about the Trinity because God is a triune being. Not three separate beings, three distinct beings in one divine essence, respectfully known as the Father God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So if you know Jesus, you know the Father. And if you know the Father, you know the Spirit. Let me bring it down. If you know the Lord Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit. If you do not know the Holy Spirit, you do not know Jesus. So if you're saved tonight, you know the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, one and the same. Now, in Romans 8 and verse 9, so I have difficulty understanding why some people call themselves believers and shy away from the Holy Spirit because He's the one that brought us to Christ for salvation to start with. He's the power source. Jesus is in heaven. So why would any church, any believer, not want the fullness of the Spirit when He's already been given? The only answer would be unbelief. So we've got to reject that. We all fight it sometimes. Reject it, repent of it, ask God to take it out of us so we can get all in where the river's flowing. It's up to us. It's up to you and me. But we must have what I'm going to talk about tonight. Romans 8 and verse 9. Hallelujah. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the Spirit that dwells in you. So the Father God in this scripture raised up Christ from the dead. But then if you're saved and born again, we know that the Holy Spirit lives in you. You may not always feel Him in there, but He won't leave. He'll never leave nor forsake. But there's there's evidences He's in there, and we need uh, reminded sometimes that we're still saved. Our name's still in the book. We still have the power. We're not always operating in it, but the power's available. Amen. If God don't use us, who's He going to use? So, the last part of it says, by His Spirit that dwells in you. To repeat, when you receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, and the blood is applied to your life by faith that cleanses, cleanses the sinner from all sins in the past up to the cross, then the Holy Spirit can legally come in and indwell that now believer, that babe in the Lord, and that is the new birth. It's a spiritual birth. God the Father doesn't make any mistakes. You're chosen vessels, every one, for a reason. Mainly, God wants to live in us. Amen. See, that's the main reason. Amen. And we're in the body of Christ whenever the Lord takes up residence and lives in us. What we want as spiritual believers is to, to allow the Lord to live in us big time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we know that He will quicken us by the Spirit that lives in us. So it's not necessarily something we, we look forward to come from heaven. Uh, something's going to come from heaven. Someone's going to come from heaven. No, He's already here. Yes. Holy Spirit's already here, and He's already in you. Yes. Yes. Amen. So you must accept this because it's true. Right. See? Right. Now, in 1 John 5 and verse 6, let's go back here. 1 John 5 and verse 6. I'm going to try not to confuse anyone tonight too much. 
We'll start there. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus the Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Remember in St. John, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. He bears witness to the truth. And by the way, the Holy Spirit only glorifies Jesus. Not any preacher, not any man or woman. And if we take any glory, other than just, you know, recognition, that's good enough, then that is your reward. No, we want to give Him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and when judgment day comes, we'll not receive any glory on our own previously and lose our reward. Okay? So, give credit where credit's due. Jesus gets all the credit. Praise the Lord. He saved us for a reason. So, it's the Spirit that bears witness to us. Then verse 7, and there are three that bear record in heaven. Everybody say three. The Father, the Word. Now, you know that's Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. <laughs> how can three be one? Well, how can you have a spirit, soul, and a body in the same entity? But the Lord has the ability to be in different places at different times and still be one. We do not. Verse 8 says, and there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, everybody say the Spirit. See, the Spirit's always involved. Three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Amen. Now, if the believer knows Jesus, he also knows the Holy Spirit. If the believer knows Jesus, she also knows the Holy Spirit. If you don't know the Holy Spirit, then you don't really know Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit and Jesus cannot be separated, but yet they are. They're distinct, but not separated like we think about. We believe that Jesus knows everything the Holy Spirit knows, even though He's still a man in heaven. When He was on the earth before the resurrection, He did not know everything. Only what the Holy Spirit revealed to Him that the Father showed him. See? But after he's resurrected, he's omnipresent today by the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus said, when two or three are gathered together in his name, there am I in the midst, he must mean the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is his Spirit. One and the same. Can I have an amen? Quit trying to figure it out, just accept it. Praise God. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit till the day of redemption. It's a good deal, good news. So if the believer knows Jesus as Savior and Lord, then the believer knows the Holy Spirit. What we want is to know the Holy Spirit in a greater way. Only comes as you yield to Him. See? Now you know His voice. Amen. He may not speak like, you know, English or whatever, but you know what he wants. As many as led by the Spirit of God, listen, they are the sons of God. So it's a high honor to be led of the Holy Spirit. You know, I would rather be bold and maybe make a mild mistake and be corrected by the Holy Spirit. At least we tried. As to sit back here and criticize and never do anything and call yourself being led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't lead us to do nothing. That's right. Amen. He needs laborers in the vineyard. He equips the laborers that go into the vineyard. And I'll tell you what, McDonald County is quite a vineyard. A lot of briars. Now, I'm going to give you some revelation here tonight. John chapter 3 and verse 34 to 36. I'm going to give you some nuggets now. And it's nothing new, but it might be new to those that haven't heard it. 
Maybe I haven't thought about it in a long time. John chapter 3, of course, Jesus is talking about the new birth. Everybody's saying new birth. Now, the new birth, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of your inner man. Your, your human spirit is resurrected to walk in newness of life immediately. Water baptism has nothing to do with it. Amen. Verse 8 says, no, uh, John 3.34, I'm sorry. Let me get on down here. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. Now, who came from God? Well, the living word became flesh. For God gives not the spirit by measure unto him. Now, think about this now. God the Father gives not the Holy Spirit by measure unto the Son, Jesus. That's what it's talking about. So Jesus is the only one that received the anointing of the Holy Spirit without measure. Uh, Rick Renner uh, did some math work and figured that uh, only 72 days of the ministry of Christ has, is recorded in the Bible out of three and a half years. That's the reason John said in the last chapter of St. John that if everything was written that Jesus did, there wouldn't be enough books in the world to contain it. I'm in 24-7. Now we need to get in on this. Don't we? What if the same Spirit... I don't, I don't, I don't get ahead of myself here. All right? Because I, I want you to get what I'm trying to say. The Holy Spirit being my helper. All right. Verse 35, the Father loves the Son and has given all things into His hand. 36, he that believes on the Son has everlasting life. Isn't that great? And he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Now, we are not of those that don't believe in the Son. I know what we all do. See? But how is the Son revealed to us? By the Spirit. No other way. Actually, the Spirit is the teacher, not me. The Spirit is the teacher. And if anything is said that's relevant, the Holy Spirit brings it to your spirit, man, and you get a hold of it, and you're being fed. The Word and the Spirit. Well, the Word is Spirit, Jesus said. But the way I explain this, the, 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 the Scripture, the Logos, when spoken from a, a, a chosen vessel, the Holy Spirit rides on those words and takes it into your soul. Miracle. Miracle. Amen. So he that believes in the Son has everlasting life. Now, what we want, at least, let me rephrase that, what I want for myself and for you and those that are watching that are believers in Christ is my prayer is, God, send the Holy Spirit upon us. Send the Holy Spirit upon us. Now, I know He's in us. And I think you understand what it means to have this Holy Spirit come upon you he comes upon you for service. Right. Yep. Amen. Amen. And we need to serve the Lord, don't we? In the beauty of holiness. We need to. Do something for God. Time is short, everybody. Life is short. Amen. We need to make our lives count for the kingdom of God. When judgment day comes, we'll be glad to have some good works laid up in heaven. So my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will begin to come upon us in a greater way than we've ever known before. And I've known some great ways, believe me. But the half has not yet been experienced. What are we waiting on? God's waiting on us. He has no limitations. Period. He's waiting on us to get hungry and desperate. And desperate and hungry. And break out of the apathy and the do da do da. And get serious about this thing because we are going to heaven. Might as well get excited about it and let God bless us with the Holy Spirit being put upon us. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what I want. Amen. Romans 8 and verse 11. 
Do you want him? See, when Paul found certain disciples in Acts chapter 19, he said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? So what he was saying is, have you received more of God? The Holy Spirit is God. Have you received more of God? That was his question. Amen. No, I'm not pacified with a little dab of do you? No. Uh Uh-uh. I'm restless. Amen. Because I realize without the power of God, Satan's going to whip us. Do you listen to me? Satan will whip us. We may not lose our soul, but we won't have much victory in this life. If we don't get a hold of the power of God, or better yet, let the power of God get a hold of us. They used to ask me, I went to Bible school, OBI. You had the victory, and this one teacher would say, the victory has me. I haven't forgot that. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Well, the Holy Ghost has us. See, it's not about us, it's about Him. But it's about Him controlling us, not possessing and making us, but under the influence. We preached a sermon a while back, under the influence, I guess. And uh, it was put up, I saw that title, I don't know where it came from, but it was good. (laughs) Under the influence of the Spirit. Now that's what we want. Amen. Under the influence. Just drunk as skunks. Oh, well, that's childish. That's not what they said when they came out of the upper room. Amen. See, we've got to change. Look, you can't have the power without the Holy Spirit. He is the power. (laughs) But He requires change. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, change. If we want the Holy Spirit to actually come upon us, like I'm thinking about, we must ask God to change us. Change me. Forget about Sister Sal and what she did to you. God changed Sister Sal and Brother Money, but more importantly and specifically, change me. So I love Sister Sal. (laughs) Brother Money, I'm working on that one. (laughs) We need to be changed. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of change. If the Holy Spirit is not changing us, we're not growing. It's my responsibility and privilege to get the Holy Ghost hot shot and step it up a notch. Some of you are, are slow learners, but I've got a lot of patience. Amen. But after a while, we just got to take the one big leap of faith and step into the arms of the Savior. Praise God. Quit dilly-dallying around. Ezekiel talked about Wading out into the water, ankle deep. Do you understand? Way down to the loin. Do you understand? And then there's water to swim in. Do you understand? We got too many Christians just dilly dallying around ankle deep. And God wants us to get out there and deep calls the deep. Yeah. Amen. But it's up to us to accept His will. And it's the same for all of us. Praise God. I tell you what. Holy Spirit starts coming back upon us because He's in us. Did you get that? Oh. The Holy Spirit blessing does not come upon anybody that's not first born again. The only time the Holy Spirit deals with people that's unsaved is conviction of sin. He comes to convict of sin, righteousness and judgment. Amen. So the Holy Spirit doesn't necessarily come upon us that way. He might. But uh, we take care of that quick. We repent, right? All right. So we're looking for the blessing. He is the blessing. I said the Holy Spirit is the blessing. The Levites did not get an inheritance in the Old Covenant. And God says, I'm your inheritance. Hey, I think I'll take that one. I'll take, you can have the land and the tents and the cattle. I think I'll take God Almighty from my inheritance. Praise God. Yes, I'm a Levite. There's no question about that. Amen. And the Levites take the tithe. Hallelujah. What happened to the shout now? Didn't Levites take the tithe in the Old Testament? They sure did. I figured you'd get on money. No, money's got nothing to do with it. Amen. Oh, If we're in the Spirit, we will obey what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. Amen.
No offering tonight. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> the only way to get rid of coveting is to give. Woo! Let me get off of that. No. What I want to talk about tonight is what I'm slowly getting to. Send the Spirit upon us. Individually and corporately. This town needs to start talking. Amen. Amen. We need to give them something to talk about. Not fake, but the real deal. Now, many is going to reject. That isn't my problem. I want what God has already given us. But we got to, the violent takes it by force. We don't give up. We keep asking, seeking, knocking until we receive what we want. Amen. He'll give us exactly what we want. But it takes time. But maybe tonight's the night. I, I'm believing that it is. Amen. Can I have two or three agree with me? Yeah. I'm believing that tonight God's going to do something. Yeah. Right. Not everybody, but there's always one here, one there. And that is the ministry. See? I go to Africa, I look for the one. Right. I look for the one. Because God can take that one and change a country. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. It isn't a big deal. It, Jesus had 12, one of them was a, a, a traitor. But look what Levin did. Yeah. See? So it's not about numbers. It's about spiritual content. Yeah. And we need the Holy Ghost. Everybody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. So send the Spirit upon us. Upon us Romans, 8, Romans 8, 11. Did I get there? I don't remember if I read that or not. Let me look right quick. I got sidetracked there. It's all right. All right. Uh, let's go to... Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Now I want you to pick up on something here. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Genesis 1, 2. And the earth was up without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now look at this. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. Now that word moved in the Hebrew means to brood and flutter over the void that's in the air. Amen. Not that we're void, but I'm saying when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, He will brood and flutter over us some way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then, of course, the word spirit in this verse. The Spirit of God. The definition is the wind... Everybody say wind. Amen. Exhale. Amen. God exhale. Yes. And then, of course, we understand this word, breath. The Spirit are the breath of God. Yes. All these words help identify the Spirit. Now that word breath... Uh, Let's look at John 3 and verse 8. Back to St. John now. 3 and verse 8. That word breath, when you begin to search out these word studies, when you find the word breath, it, the Hebrew word is pneuma. Now everybody knows this. It's just read the Bible. Say pneuma. All right, so the pneuma of God moved on the waters. And one word that describes the pneuma of God is the wind of God. Everybody say, Lord, blow on us tonight. Now we're going to go somewhere. Amen. The pneuma is described as wind, our breath. Of God. John 3, 8 now. The wind. Everybody say wind. My, my. I've always thought for many years we're talking about the wind out here. That, that Jesus was talking about, you know, we've had windy days yesterday. The wind was at 30 mile an hour, 40, you know. And the winds, where's it come from? I don't know. Where's it going? I don't know. I thought he was talking about that, but he wasn't. <laughs> oh, the wind. Now that word wind... Where am I at here? 
I'll get there in a minute. The wind blows where it listens, and now it hears the sound thereof, but cannot tell from whence it comes or whether it goes. So is everyone that's born of the pneuma. Amen. That's born of the Spirit. Amen. So the Spirit, God breathes, and that was the wind that Jesus was talking about, not the literal wind that we think about. Everybody say, Lord, blow on us. We're not talking about the air conditioner, the feeling that, or, or the literal wind that we feel on the earth. He's talking about the Spirit, the wind of God, the pneuma of God, the Holy Ghost. That's what he's talking about. So wherever the wind goes, things begin to happen. Wherever the wind leaves, things happen there. Here's the good deal about the New Covenant. The wind, thank you Lord Jesus, glory to God. The wind will never leave us for all eternity. Now shout about that, praise God. Never leave us for all eternity. Glory to God. Praise God. Lord, let the wind blow again. Lord, send the fire alone, send the rain. I don't care, just send it all. Praise God, hallelujah. That word breath, pneuma, yes. Now look at St. John chapter 20 and verse 22. That same book. John was writing to Christians, by the way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, man. After the resurrection of Christ, he met with his disciples, and he said this. After he breathed on them, everybody say breathed, there it is, Numa. After the wind came, the wind was the breath. The same one that breathed in the nostrils of Adam and he became a living soul now is in the physical glorified condition as the God man and breathes on the disciples. He breathes Numa, the Holy Spirit. Praise God, which is typified as a wind, but not a wind like we think about. Now, it does affect the, the physical, but it's more of the spirit man, your spirit. There's a wind will blow on your spirit because our spirit craves the pneuma. Amen. Glory to God. It's the Holy Ghost. He said this, Receive the Holy Ghost. Ghost. <laughs> Glory to God. Now that word received means to catch, to accept, and take hold of the pneuma. That word breathed, when he breathed on them. Are you keeping up with me now? When he breathed on them, the same Jesus, he's the same today. If he's in our midst, he's wanting to breathe Amen. on us. He don't need to breathe in. He only breathes out. But he breathes on our spirit man. Now the physical is connected to it, and the physical can be quickened by the spirit that's in us and that, that comes upon us, but it will be like a wind. And you've got to come out of the flesh now and get in the spirit to receive what I'm talking about. But it's real. He's real. That word breathe means to blow. And also, puff. 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 Puff the magic dragon, live by the sea. See, I know all those kitty songs. We were brainwashed when our kids were growing up in the house. He breathed on them. He blew wind, but it was spirit pneuma, not wind like we think about. Have you caught? Have you caught what I'm trying to say? It's a revelation that we must get a hold of. And it will change us. Thank God. It will change us from glory to glory. But not until we get a hold of the revelation. Where's the revelation come from? The Lord Jesus brings it through the Word. 
The final authority. Amen. Nothing is impossible for the pneuma of God. Hallelujah. Lord, send the wind on us tonight. Send the Spirit upon us. Amen. He goes where He wants to go. Or where He's invited. Praise God. We could be sitting here listening to me. The next minute, gone. Where are you going? The other dimension. Praise God. Heard about one woman that froze when she was preaching and stood there for a couple of days. Gone. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're talking about a sign of wonder. Oh, man. Well, I don't think people ought to fall down. What are you going to do when God starts raising them back up? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin tell a story one time about this woman got in the spirit. The wind came on her and she started dancing on the altar. He was sitting there watching it. He said she danced off the altar on the thin air. And then she came back with her eyes closed. And I believe it. I said, I believe this stuff. God's supernatural. We've got to step this thing up. Anything's possible. But we've got to believe. We get to believe. That's all. Just believe. But I mean, we can trust God. He's trustworthy. He wants to give us these things. Actually, He wants to give us Himself. That's what it is. The Holy Spirit is God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, I need the wind. I'm ready to catch it like a catcher. Where's our, where's our catcher at? Uh, oh, the catcher. She now understands, right? We're getting ready to catch the wind. Amen. So in Acts chapter 2 now, and verse 2. Amen. Are you staying with me? Hopefully. Oh, man, this, I don't know. I'm about to get happy myself here. Praise God. <laughs> Miracle. Look at verse 2. <laughs> God. <laughs> Can we get a hold of it? And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. <laughs> ah. We're here one minute, do da, do da. Next minute, suddenly, like a light switch turns on. Everything's fine. I don't have any troubles because I'm in the Spirit and I know it. I don't care what anybody thinks. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out. The song said. Praise God. Suddenly. Everybody shout, suddenly. Suddenly. You just don't know what's going to happen when we come to church. But folks, something will happen. When God sends the wind, yes. praise God, hallelujah. I feel the wind starting to blow on my soul a little bit. Glory to God, hallelujah. Can't help but be a little emotional because Jesus is my great love. Oh, He loves us so much. He gives us His Spirit, which is holy. Praise God, hallelujah. We need more. We need more. More than a double portion. That's Old Testament. When we get the kind of wind I'm talking about, it's without measure. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're the only ones that stop the measure. Well, I guess I got enough. No. Uh -uh. How big is your soul? It is so big that 2,000 demons were in one guy in the Old Testament. Jesus cast them out. They went into hogs and wouldn't kill themselves. How big is your soul? I tell you right now, only God can fill our inner man. Only God. You can't measure by feet and yards and inches. No. It's vast. Our spirit is vast. Only the Holy Spirit, omnipresent God, can fill it. Yes. He will. That's why He saved us. To live in this big time. Big time. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Acts chapter 2, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As a rushing mighty wind. Didn't say it was a wind. Like, as a Russian mighty 
wind. Now that word wind in the, in the Greek means breath, breeze, respiration. And it also involves energy. And I like to add the word power. Because you know, Jesus said, Acts 1 8, you shall receive power after the pneuma comes upon you. The wind. So they received the wind, the breath of God. Man. What an experience. Well, nothing's really changed. Nothing's changed. We don't understand because of our culture. But God wants us to understand about this. Amen. So... There came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. That word wind is pneuma. Pneuma. Which translate Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit came. Jesus said himself, if I don't go away, the comforter's not going to come. But if I go back, I'll send him. Praise God. I'm telling you, God sent somebody from heaven. He is known as the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit Himself, and He's here to stay. Praise God. He's on the job. We need to get excited about it. So, when the Spirit came formally to stay, you see, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon, come upon, come upon, come upon, Prophet, priest, and king, that's all. And certain other individuals. But then he would have to leave because the Holy Spirit could not legally indwell them because Jesus hadn't died on the cross yet. They were still saved in that covenant. But we're in a better covenant. Holy Spirit, when He comes, He doesn't leave. You leave. He doesn't leave. Where does the Bible say He leaves you? Where? No. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. So, throw out that Old Testament thinking. We're on new covenant time here. He came to stay. He's not leaving. But we want Him to live in us and come upon us big time, don't we? Yes. So when the wind came, which was a pneuma in Acts chapter 2, it blew. God blew. God breathed. And then, of course, the Spirit is the pneuma. Did you get the little message tonight? All is a reference to the Spirit Himself. All these things is a reference to the Holy Spirit Himself. And I'm telling us all tonight, by the grace of God, He wants to come upon us big time. 